everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight for prayer meeting. And as I said to you, our theme for tonight is first grace, then glory. Let's close our eyes and let's invite our Heavenly Father to be with us and the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we study His Word again. Let's close our eyes. Our gracious Father in Heaven, again it's prayer meeting. Weeks are flying by and yet during these weeks we recognize that a lot of things are happening and we are grateful gracious Father that you gave us today and as we come to the end of this day and as the sun is setting it is our sincere desire that you will take us in the palm of your hand that you will be with us that you will be our God and that we will be your people Father in heaven it is so wonderful to know that you never slumber or sleep and that you don't grow weary like we do and at the end of this day I find myself to be quite um, tired but I thank you for everything that has happened for all the opportunities that you granted me today and I do pray gracious father that each person as they are watching whatever it is that they've done today that you will have blessed them and gracious father as we are about to sleep we do pray that you will give us a good night's rest but before we go to sleep gracious father we do want to turn for a moment and we do want to hear you speak to us Holy Spirit please make the Father's words known to us may we be stirred within ourselves as we hear what our Father has to speak and say to us dear Jesus thank you again for making it possible for us to speak to the Father and we do ask all these things in your beautiful name dear Lord Jesus Amen okay dear friends what I want us to do is to go to Psalm 84 and we're going to look at verse 11 now I'm going to be reading this out of the King James Version because it is in the King James that we find the two words that I would like us to look at tonight so I'm reading out of Psalm 84 verse 11 and it says there for the Lord God is a sun and a shield the Lord gives grace and glory he withholds no good thing from those who walk with integrity so I want you to notice right here dear friends that the Lord gives grace and glory now as I've titled our presentation tonight first grace and then glory there's a reason why I'm doing this and in order to understand this I would like you to go with me to uh, first of all 2 Peter chapter 1 okay go with me to 2 Peter chapter 1 now, the interesting thing, as um, I've started to become very conscious of over the last while, and that is that our Heavenly Father always keeps the best for last. Although this world is beautiful, although I enjoy it incredibly to see the nature that God has created and how even though it has been touched with sin is still such an incredible beauty and reveals the glory of our Father and when I see this I'm wondering how or amazed at the, the thought that this if this is just a glimpse in a sense of what is to come then it is truly from grace to glory and I, I think about this all the time. Whenever I get into hard times, I know that in that hard time, 
God is going to give me grace, which is necessary. And then as I um, use grace, it will then bring glory to our Heavenly Father when we are victorious. So let me explain what I'm trying to do here. I'd like you to look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, and this is what it says. So we also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. Did you hear that? But then these words, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Now, right there in the last part of verse 19, we have this concept from glory, from grace to glory, sorry. First of all, it says there that we must pay attention to the, the, the prophetic word, word as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Now, dear friends, what I want you to understand is that it's not first glory, then grace. It's grace and then glory. And right here in this verse, we see this thought. Let me explain. It says there that we are to pay attention to the prophetic word. As we study the prophetic word, it will be like a light that shines in a dark place. Now we are living in a world where it is dark and any source of light is a very valuable light. Dark is extremely dark when there is no light dear friends so when we have the word of god this word of god in the world that we are living in which is very dark is a light that we need to give attention to but then it says that as i give attention to this light it will then introduce me or that the next thing that will happen as it says there that the, um, the morning star rises in your heart. So when we go through the challenges that we are doing or going through, those challenges are going to be forming us, are going to actually be the means by which we are going to let our light shine. And our Heavenly Father will give us the grace that is necessary to be able to deal with the darkness that we find ourselves in. As 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, that our Heavenly Father will not tempt us or test us above that we are able, but will with the trial, with the burden that we are going through, provide the means for us to be able to stand up under it. So again, in the dark place that we find ourselves, God will provide sufficient light for us to be able to see the light. And then as we behold this light, as we use this light to push back darkness, then the morning star will rise in our hearts. Now, let me put it in another way. And in order to do this, I'd like you to go with me to Genesis chapter 1 and I want you to notice that we are going to look at the acts of creation. Now what I would want to do is I want to draw your attention to the, the let me just uh, find it there for you, the um, fourth day, okay? So it's the fourth day of creation that we are going to look at. What did our Heavenly Father create in the fourth day? It says there in verse 14, And God said, listen to this dear friends, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky 
to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And then it says in verse 15, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. Verse 16, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. Now, what I want you to notice, dear friends, is that God, first of all, saw the need to have two lights. The one light, which is referred to as the greater light, was to govern the day. And then there was to be a lesser light, which was to govern the night. Now, the lesser light I would like to equate as grace. Do you understand? But the sun, the great light, I would like to equate as glory. So let me um, put it this way. The, the moon, which we know, is the lesser light. The moon is not a light of its own. The moon is not a source of light. The moon, as we know, basically reflects the light. But it's very important to understand that the moon can only be seen and is visible in the dark darkness of the hours it's not in the day that you can see the the moon it is in darkness that the moon glows at its brightest and i want you to consider that grace is visible and is felt its greatest its effectiveness is its greatest when you are or find yourself in your darkest moments. And I want you to understand that what grace does, it helps you to handle the darkness until being victorious, you will glorify or be glorified. As it says in Psalm 84 verse 1, that the Lord gives both grace and glory. Do you understand? He hasn't left us in darkness. He's given us a lesser light. And this lesser light draws our attention to the great light, which is a, the light we cannot see at the moment. We can only see the lesser light because of the darkness. So grace is that first commodity that we need in order for us to be able to see finally the glory of God, we need grace, dear friends. So what I want you to recognize that I wanted you to see tonight, and that is that we mustn't get confused as to the procedure or how we are going to um, uh, evolve to glory. Paul makes it very clear that as we look at Christ, we are growing into his image. And then it uses these words from glory to glory. Do you understand? We who symbolize basically the lesser light are the instruments of grace as we, God's children, place our faith on the word of God. We then become those lights to the people around us in darkness. And in some sense, that is the way in which grace is extended to them. And the, the grace is basically going to be um, instrumental in drawing people's attention to the great light. And Jesus is that great light. So... Look at it this way. 
as grace works in us, people are drawn to that. It is a way in which they can see that there is light in the darkness. And as they look at this light that whelms up in us, as 2 Peter says, it will rise finally until the day star or the morning star rises until from grace to glory. And many times, dear friends, when I look around me, I see evidence of grace. I see it in the light that shines in people's lives. I see the kind works that they're doing. I see the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. I see that. And as I look at that, I realize that grace is at work. And what I'm looking forward to, dear friends, is to see them growing from grace to glory. That, that although now it is but a small light, but that that light will grow and grow and grow until the Son of Righteousness is revealed in our lives. So what I want you to see tonight with me, first of all, that if you find yourself in a dark place, my advice to you is to go to the Word of God because the Word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And as you spend time in the presence of the Word, the light will rise in your heart. Do you understand? And you will grow in grace. You will grow from grace to glory. That will be your personal experience, but you're not going to experience it unless you first experience grace in your life. Do you understand? Secondly, I want you to look at it this way, that the only light that people see because they don't have the word will be the light that they see in your lives. And I'm hoping, dear friends, that as you nurture that light, as you spend time, um, you know, feeding from the word of God, that that light that is in you will finally point the people to Christ. And like Paul says, there will be no I light in me, but only Christ. Like Paul says, I want to know nothing else save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So when people do look at us, they must see God's grace in our lives. They must see that God is the one that is helping us to survive in this dark world. And then as they behold us, dear friends, may they then be taken with us from grace to glory. I look forward to the time, and I know that for a moment, this world is going to be a dark world. And a question is asked, watchman, what of the night? And the watchman responds by saying, the day is coming, but so is the night. And what I want you to think about is that as the day star rises in your heart, please remember, dear friends, that although you're moving from one dark situation where you've managed to find light for what you're doing, darkness is again going to come. And what you need in that moment is grace. You need the Word of God to be able to move again from that dark moment that will come to your life so that you again may glorify God. So, when I look at this, I think of Christ. He was moved to go into the wilderness where he was to be tested. But he had a preparation time, a 40 day and night preparation time. And that basically was time that he used to find grace, to find the word of God 
to spend time in the Word of God so that when the darkness came, when the tempter came to him in that dark moment, when he was at his darkest point, he could use the grace of God's Word to be victorious over the darkness of the devil, to actually let light shine where the dark, where the devil was trying to make it dark. But then I want you to notice that after Christ had gone through all of this, he then was fed and looked after by the angels of God. But the Bible teaches me that the devil left him for a short while. Which means that again Christ was going to find himself in a dark place and he needed to prepare for that darkness. And the way that he prepared for that darkness was to go to the Word of God where he would find grace through the Word of God to find what God was saying for him. And he used that in those moments when it was dark to move from darkness to light, from grace to glory. I'm hoping that this thought has made you think a little bit. Should you find yourself, first of all, in darkness, spend time in the presence of the Word, and God's grace will be sufficient, dear friends, and you will be able to see the day star rising in your heart. But then, should you be that person at this moment where you seem to be bathing in the full exposure of the, of the light, remember the prophet's words that although day is coming, so is the night. And you need to prepare for that night. And the way you prepare is using the gift of grace that God has given to us. So God gives us grace and then he gives us glory from grace to glory.